Welcome to Bitter Cold Greymouth. If you're not sure where Greymouth is, it's located on the western side of the South Island. We just launched the Mighty 770 into some gale force easterly winds, which is common down here early morning. I guess coming through up through the valley there. Pretty exciting, we're heading out and chasing the mad rush for southern bluefin tuna. Last week the lads got a heap of them. Chainos went out with Anton and that, and those boys got a couple of real big modules, 120 kilo. We've got Cappy Dan on the helm again. Dan's got heaps of experience down here out of Greymouth. Chainos is uh, on fishing duties and I'm on camera duty. Pretty exciting, a little bit nervous as well. You know, last time I crossed the bar was many years ago and it's, uh, I've sort of uh, been a little bit puckered up about it for a long time actually. Excited and nervous apprehensive all in one. Made sure we got the boat real organized, everything stowed away. We've all got our own life jackets, personal life jackets. And what I've been in by personal life jackets actually, we actually spent a lot of good money on decent life jackets, not your $99 inflatable ones. High end ones, we've all got our own EPIRBs and lights, and knives on the life jackets and that. Trying to be as fully safety conscious as possible. Heaps of boats launching today, we're just waiting for the light to come up so we can see what the bar's doing. And then we'll make our way out. See if we can't snaggle a bluefin tuna. Yeah, good morning, Greymouth Radio. This is Infamous. Infamous, want to uh, log ATR, please? Infamous, Greymouth Maritime Channel 68. Copy. Radio, Greymouth Marine Radio. This is Infamous. Call sign is Zulu Mike Quebec 8887. That's Zulu Mike Quebec 8887. We've got three POB and we are heading out of Greymouth Port now. We're heading southwest to the Hokitika Trench. We will be returning back to port Sunday, tomorrow, at approximately 1600 hours. Copy. A Romeo, Romeo, that's all received. That's all received. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Over and out. Made it out to the trench. That was about a, oh, probably about an hour journey out. Some sneaky buggers overnight ended up putting a banana in our boat. Shane us found that on the way out. Trying to bad luck us. The boys next to us here have hooked up. They are in, and we've just got a trawler in behind us now. Hundreds of birds working out here. We just set all the lures, and uh, yeah, go time. God, it feels fishy. Fishy, fishy. Uh, should be alright. Yeah, no, it's all looking good. It's hard to tell, there's so much going on, Dan. Accommodation was at the top 10. That was actually awesome accommodation. Massive complex, too. It was really, it's pretty impressive. Slept real well. Got up and went to the. What was that place called? Do Duck In Bakery and got a heap of snacks and sammies and stuff because we might, uh, depending on how today goes, we might stay overnight tonight and have a drop for a sword. But we'll see, uh, we'll see how it plays out anyway. Hey Shane Os, have you got that Black Magic Gimbal ready for you, pal? This is where you question your lure choice, isn't it? <laughs> Got all the signs though, isn't it? Good. 
this epic adventure is made possible by our amazing sponsors, Senator Boats and their incredible 770, proving that anywhere is possible on the water. Thanks to their unwavering support, we're ready to tackle the deep blue like never before. Yamaha Marine New Zealand, offering reliability that just keeps going. Their marine engines power our ventures and make them all the more unforgettable. Navigating the open waters and finding fish with ease is made possible by Simred Electronics. They provide us with the cutting edge technology we need to stay on the fish. We're cruising to a destination thanks to Houston Motors, the official sponsor of the mighty Mitsubishi Triton. The trusty vehicle is getting us there with all our gear in tow. When it comes to tackling the biggest of slugs, Shimano Fish New Zealand has us covered. Their top notch gear is designed and made for anglers who demand the best. And of course, a big shout out to Black Magic Tackle for providing us with the best Kiwi Terminal Tackle. They make sure we're equipped to handle whatever the sea throws our way. We're incredibly grateful to have these amazing sponsors on board, making our fishing adventures possible. Just gone 10 o'clock, pretty quiet actually. The boys hooked up to us straight away when we just started towing lures right early on. That was about 8.30. We just had a little snack, We're heading out now towards the big Russian trawlers. They're gonna work so far offshore out here. They've got a, like a limit before they can come in. So the smaller boats work the hokey in close and the bigger boats are working the hokey out wide, so that's why all the tuna are here, guys. They're chasing the massive amount of bait fish, but also skimming all the dregs out of the hokey boats when they're pulling in the nets. And easily snacking. Sun's just popped up, that easterly's just died off. Now it's down to probably about seven, eight knots. Nice big lazy swell coming in. Lots of birds, seals galore, yeah, but she's uh, pretty quiet. Is there one on here? Yep. Fish on. Straight down. Yep. What are you going, bro? Get on that rod. Keep going forward. Just something get on that rod. No, no, keep going. It's got tension on it. It's fine. Keep moving. I can't harness. Arbitrary action. No, man. It's just harness. Put it, it off. Track Put it off, Dan. What do you want to do, mate? Yep, just come back on the reef. Okay. Neutral there. Yeah, mate. You want me to come back on it? No, no, you're all good. Touching gear, going towards. Yeah, that's all good. Yep. You got all day. Right, Marco. How are you looking? Okay. Come on. How are we looking? Yeah, beautiful. Neutral, Dan? Yep. Right hand down, take it forward. Yep. Go. Yep. Beautiful.
Holy shit, my adrenaline is at 400%, man. Holy shit, fellas. Yep. What am I um harpooning or yeah. something? Shine off. I don't know what you've got for a tail rope or whatever, Dan. I think we'll just gaff the right hand down. Right hand down. Hard right hand down. Color. Right, Dan. Neutral. Now nah, I'm powering it to the boat. No, no, I'm just chill. Mark, call the call the direction for Dan. Circle, in out the back. Right here. Leaders here. Come and lead us, fish dudes. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. it up. I'll go grab some. You're right. Come back around. Right, right. Come, 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 lead. Dan, come and get it, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the boat. Dan, come and get it. Where's the gloves? Where's the gloves? Where's the leader gloves? Did you get them out of your bag? No, I can suck. Ditch that camera, dude. Let's get it all. Say when you're ready and I'll get some drag on and get it back up. It's only a little one. Yeah, yeah, Drags back. Yeah. Grab that gas. Yeah. Yeah. Got this gas. That I'll put it back. Don't you? Step it over. Right. Chill down, you. Chill out. Chill. It's only a puppy. Chill the out. I got it. It's all good. It's all good. One, two, three, and then. Right, breathe. Yeah. 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 He's coming too fast. These are barrel. Right, so those guys are just six-hand. I'll get a couple more lures in, Dan, and then we'll deal with it, eh? Yeah. Awesome. Lots of pressure, but awesome. the first bluefin tuna on board actually I've ever caught but Shane Austin did a good job that was pure uh, adrenaline but also sheer panic and chaos uh, no we didn't have anything organized and uh, we had it all planned to be organized and then we just weren't organized I mean Cappy Dan didn't even have his leader gloves out of his giant bag <laughs> <laughs> Now we are up around all the big uh, sea lords trawlers. They're the Russian, Russian uh, contracted trawlers. Thousands of birds. We just hooked up straight up behind uh, the Meridian, actually. Double hook up and dropped one of them. Shane, I landed the other one, which was awesome. We landed the other one. Big old team effort that was. You just need to, the panic stations need to reduce a little bit. 
Oh, they are now. We want this one on the deck, so she's all, I don't, all cool now. She's good now. I don't know if you guys have seen on the camera me telling the guys to chill the, chill the bird out. Because there's a high stress levels going on there. And that's not how we roll on Infamous. She's all chillaxed at good times. Now we're going to find its big brother. <laughs> and the trawl rules are coming up now. So they're just about to haul their bag in, which will pop up behind them. Be full of hokey. But you'll see coming up next to us now the uh, giant Russian trawler, Meridian. A little bit of an interesting fact for you. The crew do six months on and six months off. And the crew that have to do the winter, this time of year, are the unlucky ones because they do winter here in New Zealand and they go back to the Ukraine and do winter there. And the crew that do the summer do summer there and do when they get home and then summer over here. A little bit of pointless information for you. It's probably just my adrenaline still working overtime. But let's see if we can't get a, another tune. Just gone one o'clock. Phil and the crew on no limits have just hooked up. We're uh, not too sharp, Shanos. Too sharp, bruh. It's a bit quiet at the moment, nothing much going on. But that wind's dropped off quite a bit now, anyway. But we're still plugging on. We're gonna carry on out here and see if we can't get a big slug. Three o'clock trip report. Phil, and the boys at No Limits just uh, hooked up and landed their first one for the day. They've dropped a couple. And they landed. Sounds like a goodie. But yeah, it's dropped right off. Still a big swell coming in, but it's a mill pond out here. We're just deciding on what we're going to do for the plan of attack next. But yeah, it's mint out here. It's just getting better and better. But Tuna has eluded us for this afternoon. On 3.30 we had a bit of a lure rearrange and change up and also deployed the flippy floppy things which are a teaser and we've got one on each side on the Beastmasters and that's just to create a bit more action. In the rough they're a bit of a nightmare getting tangled up with every other lure so we only deploy them when it's generally when it's calm, a lot easier to manage that way.
just gone 5.30, freezing cold out here now, a few dolphins in behind us, but still, yeah, not much uh, sunset and not much going on at the moment still. Bit of a very quiet afternoon, spiralled into fishing depression the boys have. Uh, all the other boats seem to have been hooking up, dropping fish though by the sounds of it. But we're still plugging away. Just gone uh, six o'clock. We're pulling the gear in now, all the lures. And what's the plan, lads? We're gonna go for a blue nose and a sword now, or we're gonna drop baits behind these while we're out here. Or what do, what do you want to do? These ones first, eh? Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll chuck a couple of baits out behind these and then I think we're going to go for blue nose and a sword for the night and uh, then just rotate shift sleeping. So, overnight out on the briny. Should be good, with us good. And heaps out here for the night as well. I think Phil's out here on a 770 for the night. Yeah, a few other boats. So it should be entertaining. One thing we discussed is we bought a heap of food, like buns and that from the bakery, but we just realized out here now we could have bought a roast. We didn't even think about it. We could have had a delicious hot roast for, for tea. Shane just wish he could have a shower. Don't you, little fella? Ladle up the arms. We can well, do that tomorrow, though. You got a fresh jacket on, though, so you're all good. You know. Right, I suppose I should do something constructive, shouldn't I? Before we continue with the video, we truly appreciate your support. If you enjoy the content we create and the adventures we share, please consider subscribing to our channel. Becoming a subscriber not only helps us, but also keeps you in the loop for all the exciting content we have in store. Plus, it's absolutely free. As a subscriber, you'll also get the chance to win an epic adventure with the crew. Please hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell. Your support means everything to us. Thank you to all our current subscribers for your incredible support support and to those that are considering joining us. Dropping for Blue Nose after dark. Have you guys actually ever done this or with is this lights. with lights? I'm gonna turn that light off. Here we go. Oh no it's not so great with that one off. 200 meters. Didn't you say the feeds at that depth? But what actually is that? Oop, something just hit it. We'll stop it there. Carry it on. Are we drifting very fast? Nice. This is my first ever drop for Blue Nose. Is it? Yep. Never done it before. You've been Blue Nose? No. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Old Shane Oss on the other side, he spiralled big time. You okay, Shane? I'm great. We actually took all the sharp knives, sharp objects <laughs> off him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he spiralled big time. How deep is it, Dan? 328. 328, close. Jimmy would be. Yeah. Shane Oss is in. Fish. 
would he not be good to um, stitch up, take his head up and stitch up as a sword bait? He would be. Which is always best, isn't it? So the Jimmy is a cousin to the Barracuda, but a deep water species, so you generally get them, don't quote me on this, but anywhere from 150 metres to, I don't know what depth, guys, deep, deep or something. They look like the Barracuda cousin, but they're distinctively different. They've got a different browner colour to them. No worms. No worms, so you can eat them. They're really good smoked, and they've got a light, a, a real distinctive lateral line that runs down them, so you can tell the difference. But they are very good on the smoker. Right, we're using the Shimano Beastmasters, and we've got them on status bent butt rods. The purpose of the bent butt rod is keeps it more parallel to the surface, so you won't point load or break rods. So you can uh, leave them in the rod holder. We've got 80 pound braid on them, actually and I'll always run 10 meter liters on my deep water gear, and that's about 120 pound 10 meter liter. Gives it a bit of stretch and takes the abrasion out of it for any like hooker and sharks and all that sort of stuff. The braid's got no abrasion resistance, so if you tie big liters, it's uh, definitely a good thing. And using the trusty old bottom bangers, that's the Black Magic bottom bangers. That's our own custom rigs, available only in New Zealand at Big Blue Dive and Fish and they're handmade in Auckland by Black Magic. And running the 48 ounce uh, ball sinkers on there. And we use the big balls because big balls are always good. And they roll across rough terrain a lot better so you get less chance of snags. But that was successful, Jimmy on board. Well, me and Shane I thought it was good. Dan just said that was junk. <laughs> Oh, a couple of drops for blue nose, no, only sign, sign mid-water. Got one Jimmy and yeah, we're gonna go and have a go for a sword now. Just gone 11 o'clock. Had a hit on the sword rig. Well, uh, fish on. Did the reel go or did you guys stand there? Nah, the reel went. Shit. Yeah. Good angle and everything. What? Was a sword. Yeah. Just around with it. Hey? Just smacking it. The rod went like three times before it really took off, and then I started winding, 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 winding the weight come on. Oh, it certainly wasn't a shark. It's not our trap, is it? Look at that, like that's not all on it. Look at that, oh, about there. So it wouldn't be a shark, they would have taken that off. It's, that would have been the bill. That would have been the sword hitting it up here, eh? Probably. Here we go. Smack him. Because you think that the hook was hook was in the fish, the bill would have been up here. Yeah. You reckon? Find out shortly when he bites it again and you get to drag him up and dog him on the head. Bills are brutal. Yeah, look at that, all the way up. It goes right up to about there. They're soft as too, like. So it might have only hit him here. Yeah. What have we done? Oh. Um. What have you did? It worked. Just dropping back here. We've still got hours for daylight before we hit out there, really. Should, should we have another drop? Yeah. I'll just move back up a bit and go. Well, did you see a mark or no? No, I was just... no look, look at the sign though. I was sitting there, I was sitting there, and I was like, 
Sound. I hear the, hear the crack. And then stop. Are you using the same trace? It's still going to be stronger than if they are not going to break. Shit, mate, get back to bed, you. Damn. Hell. That four hours not look after you. Four right. hours. Did your little blankie over you? I did. Then I, then I heard the real one. I just got to the back foot. Get back to the dude. You got another fish on. I know what it's doing. Fish on. Fish on. Yeah, it's still there. Colour? It's something pretty small, eh? I don't even take it out of the bottle. Is it light down there? Shark, shark. <laughs> there was something bigger down there. Is it? Did it eat it? It's not a beagle, is it? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Strangled himself. Yeah. Oh, what's the seal up to? I thought it was going to go on it. Yeah. We've got four beagle boys. Oh, look. He didn't quite have the bite like the other one, did he? Nah. That's awesome. Wasn't the bite of the last one though, was it? No, it didn't have any of that weight. Well, that was a poor beagle released at the boat, but had nothing on the sword. Complete different bite again, eh? The shark just ate it, took it, took it and then it was done. Yeah. And it was easy to bring up. That first bite. Uh, what did it hit three times, didn't it? The first one we seen it, and it hit it, had quite a good run, and then stopped, and then um, and then another two more times. Yeah. So we let it run for a bit before we put a bit of pressure on it, eh? But the weight difference was. Then it yeah. came up though. Yeah, yeah. Then it came up as soon as I grabbed the rod, started winding, and it started coming straight up um, before the weight came on. Another one. It's all good. Keep it going that way, Shane. Coming out the back. I can't see though, dude. If it's a bit of a 
We've got lights. Uh, Sharky. I can't tell. It's going under the boat. Yeah, there it is. Sharky. Oh, it's another poor beagle. Just gone four o'clock. We just hooked up a bait then, surface bait, to another poor beagle. The boys are now jumped back into bed. They've been going pretty strong. I just had my two hour snooze, my two o'clock to four o'clock shift. Now it's just gone 4 a.m. so I'll stay up from now on. But yeah, a bit of excitement, but then you could tell it halfway through the battle that it's not a tuna. But we'll wait to first light and carry on anyway. Especially if it come back. Yeah. Just sort of mucking around with it. Just close to breakfast time for them, though. Yeah. Just uh, just about five o'clock. We just had another hit. Lad's got a little bit of quick kip time. We're back in. Someone needs a seat by the sound of that. Needs a seat. Life airs, eh? Taking in line, is it? None of the sharks have to even just land in the in. Eh? None of the sharks have to even just land in the straight in. You reckon shark? 100%. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just the same as the other ones, I think, dude. Hooked in the bum shark. <laughs> yep. oh. It's gone six o'clock and got another fish on. Gone, Burger. Cancel that, still there. The all new 2023 summer merch has arrived. It's all available online at fishingtoextremes.com. Buying merch helps to keep the fishing log series going. So if you're looking for some new fancy bojancy fishing digs, jump online and check out the all new merch.
just gone 7.30, we've got the lures out, we're chasing down the big trawlers again. But that was a pretty full on night actually. Big swell coming in behind us. You can probably see that. <laughs> epic, epic trip so far. Tuna on, sword, overnighting, lack of sleep. It's been all go. Once again, the tuna were eluding us after hours of towing lures around the massive trawlers, and our old mate Fishing Depression had joined us once again, with me sulking and Shanos dropping his bottom lip, and Dan still sleeping. With the change of the tide, we needed a serious new plan of attack if we wanted to land a giant southern bluefin tuna. Looking at the Simrad CMAT chart, we decided there was a good chance the tide would push bait and feed up the bank from the deep to the surface, and at a long shot the tuna would be there to snack away. We headed for the general area and it wasn't long before we found the massive schools of bait fish forced up from the deep to the surface with the tide, and the schools of southern bluefin tuna close behind them. Fish on! Hey? Did you just tell me to worry about that fish? Big one from some probably come off the bait or shane off. That was awesome. Um, just leaving the boat ticking along, eh? Hit it, missed it, and then came back to it, didn't it? Yeah. He's digging down there, mate. Quite deep too, eh? Can't see him. Oh, man. Way back. Yeah, a lot. Half that's gone. You took a lot of line. It is. Well, 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 well rested, uh. It's still, still just as heavy from the Man, man. We're off. I'd set the autopilot and we're heading to... I did south. look where we were heading. And what do we say? We'll check out. 
Yeah, but it's a good plan to head back. What do we need, Shamos? Fish. Nothing, baby. Nothing, a fish. It's a bit of, bit of lack to this hour. Yeah. Give me three little muskets here to get my chubbies. change after that big run of the boat, eh? Dig, dig, just digging down now. I've lost my line since I got up since that run. Is that a take -in? Yep, we've got colour. Uh, hey. You have to go around again, mate. Go around again, mate. He's right here, you're nearly at leader. Go around again. One of you, I could only... Yep. Okay. Your tail, your tail hooked him. You're dragging them. Just Shane Oz, yeah, go, just grab the um, gap. He might have just unread. Where is it? Just out, straight out the back. Straight out, right here, mate. Okay, get back and off. Nice 
scared for Marco. Holy f boys. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> Good. Just um yeah we got him secured Dan, get that rod in the holder mate. Yep. And um Lift the bay, yep, that's it. Oh. And I want that if I can Marco, you want to go down that hook? I've got the gas. Yep. He's on the boat, he's on the boat. <laughs> That's the one. Shot, bro. Calm down, Shane Os. That's quite an emotional fish, that. That is a very, very emotional fish. Man, did the boys work for that. <coughs> well done, mate. Good shot, Dan. Man. Awesome. Yeah. Real cool. Shit. Look at the size of that thing. Yeah, we need to get him chilled down ASAP too. Because Dan gave him a pretty good workout. So we'll clear this gear out of the road. Yeah, it's the way. Oh, that's Grand Slam. Hey? Grand Slam. Good job, Dan. Duck. Hot now. Lose a jacket. Good work, man. Good work. Long time coming, that fish, wasn't it? That's the most serious he's been all weekend, Dan. Happy Dan? Yeah, very. Would that be your personal best or not? No. no. 140 was there. A little bit smaller. Super nice, Dan. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Right up. Just cleaning up Dan's fish, and we've got another one just hit us. We're heading way home. Oh, that's 
You wouldn't believe it if we said it that we basically had spiraled into such massive tuna depression that we turned off and were towing lures towards the uh, blue nose spot. And as soon as that happened, oh, as soon as we started towing, um, Dan got up out of bed and had seriously spiralled. And then pretty much as soon as, was he, did you just get up and we hooked that fish? I got up and come out and said, <laughs> is it still as depressing as what it's been? <laughs> and the rod went off at the same time. Can you pull that rigger up, maybe? And yeah, we hooked, um, Dan hooked that giant tuna. And then uh, we decided we'll chuck the lures out as we're making our way over to, uh, we're gonna go for blue nose, we decided we'd pull the pin and get into grain mouth before the tide. Okay. Towing a lure and then we hooked up one. It was a small uh, um, bluefin, and then he had another big mate following him around. We pulled the lures in when Shane was fighting that smaller one, and we had the Grand Slam Lumo hanging out of the outrigger, and it was just dangling in the water there, and that tuna came up and nailed it out of the outrigger uh, after we gaffed the other one on board. So you wouldn't read about it. Our tuna spiralling has now gone to tuna tester. What we thought was going to be a neutral, yeah. What we thought was going to be a bit of a well, still an epic episode, has turned out to be an amazing episode. But oh, it's hard to move anywhere on the deck now. Hey, chilly mate, winds. You have to go around on it, mate. Which forward? Yeah, go and hard to try. Dan, do you want to um, drive? And I'll, oh, you got gloves on. Yeah, you're back where we way away. I want to film as well, lads, yep, so okay. don't get angry. All right, I'll come and drive for a bit. Is this a good fish? Yeah. Jump on the back side so Dan can still see yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'll get out of the way here. Yeah, it's a good fish, mate. Yeah, we need to Back to one there.
You want to shine? You got a drink or anything? I'm running my Tell her. Get the gas ready and I'll grab the leader of the club. Just one go. Boys. I don't know what do you want to do. We don't need another one, do we? We're not going we're not probably gonna get down here again. Doesn't matter, we got it on video. And I didn't want to take it anyway, so. Yeah, Yep, so that was awesome. I hope this back down and bugger off then, because if we put the lures back in, yeah. we'll show us we'll have the gaffs out. <laughs> Look at the sign. You don't want to try and top water when it gets stank. Oh, it'd probably be pretty cool, wouldn't it? What a, let's just go. Hour and a half to get in. No, we need to cap that out. Yeah. Uh, right, let's get this thing. Top water would be cool, but nah. Let's get this thing in the back. Right, I know you need to draw them and we'll. Alright, I'm just gonna. Okay, I won't finish that then. Look at that sign. I know, there's tuna galore now at the end of the trip. Like, there's so much tuna on the sounder. I'll get a screenshot, but you'll see it's picking up hard bottom. Thanks, man. But we cool last hour of the trip, mate. Shit, oh. yes. Yeah. It's on the 10 cents. Not even 10 cents, it's pretty like for the whole time out here. say pretty much is probably a biblical trip with Dan and Shane Oss. Yeah, my first time down in Greymouth and I don't even know how long, it's probably longer than our Kaikoura seaweed, giant seaweed mission. And um, to get out with the boys and we just came across a bar, it was calm as, which was mint. 
if you've followed the series, you know I'm a little bit hesitant about bars from a skier way back in probably episode, it was episode 13, 14 with uh, Hockey and Hoey and we took on a bar and we certainly shouldn't have. I mean, everything was alright, uh, except uh, emotional trauma and lack, lack of sleep for another two weeks after that, but yeah, it was awesome to get out here and in the dying seconds of the trip, as soon as Dad came out of the cabin from his uh, little kip, we were going to pull the pin and go for Blue Nose and then the tuna just came on and hopefully I've got footage of that tuna hitting that lure in the outrigger, that was impressive. But uh, anyway, we ended up dropping him right at the boat, oh, probably 10 minutes down under the boat, but we decided we were going to let him go anyway, so that turned out to work out really well actually. Anything to add, lads? Stuck at it, got the job done. Yeah. Chat on the radio, sharing info on the other lads. Yeah, heaps of good chat with the other lads too on the radio, so that was really good. And, you know, it was a good little community out there talking. But yeah, Dan's tuna was awesome, man. Seeing that thing come in, its head, the size of its head's impressive. I, I haven't been tuna fishing really other than albacore, and getting a little le legal albacore for me is like a, probably a 300 pound striped marlin. So seeing that thing come up, materialise out of the depths, was pretty cool. Hopefully we've got real cool footage. But uh, anyway guys, thanks heaps for watching. Thanks for your support and we'll see you on the next adventure.